These are the things with the mountains, right? You just never know. There's a very good reason the hike to Iceland's highest peak failed, and it's not one you'd expect. Sitting at 2,110 meters, it doesn't seem hard, but it's the longest guided day hike in Europe, full of crevasses, which can be deadly. Holy shit. This is why most foreign hikers will opt to have a local guide. And that's what I did. At this point, I've never even held an ice axe. One of the other big factors that will work against you is the weather. The weather is unpredictable here. It's crazy. The only thing I was sure of was my fitness. We're going at a slow pace. Just two weeks earlier, I had run an ultra marathon from one peak to another on my project to reach the highest point in every European country. I think physically I could do it. Mentally, I'm not sure where I'm at. I would be in Iceland for 10 days. So my hope was to summit before leaving. So my first attempt was the day after I arrived. It was supposed to be the day that I was gonna do the highest peak. Due to weather conditions, it got canceled. The guiding company had rescheduled for Friday. So five days later. Today the wind gusts were too much and they moved it tomorrow. And tomorrow is literally my last day. The last chance, the last opportunity before I fly out on Sunday. I just got an email from the guides and they say, good day. Weather forecast tomorrow is looking fantastic. See you then. Oh my God. I think it's gonna happen. Holy shit. <laughs> the wind gusts made it dangerous, but the following day looked promising. This was my last chance. Something wasn't sitting right with me all week. I had extra nerves, more than usual. It's actually, it's kind of intense seeing it like this because it's not often that I actually get to see the peak, like exactly what I'm gonna do. This is the route we'd be taking, starting from Sandfell. Is it the crevasses? The possibility of the storm taking a turn while climbing? not knowing who I'd be attached to on a rope. It was a weird inner conversation. So, I mean, anytime you do something for the first time, you're a bit nervous, right? I'm tearing up for you looking at this. Really? It's crazy. I think physically I can do it. Mentally, I'm not sure where I'm at. What do you think about when you're climbing? Normally my mind relaxes. Sometimes I problem solve. Normally I just find peace. Think about what shots I'm going to take, because normally I'm filming. <laughs> it was the person that decided they're going to summit this and they find the trail, you know. It was a group of three in August 1891, led by a British adventurer, Frederick W. W. Howell, and local guides Paul Johnson and Thorlakur Thorlakson. I'm a lot more excited now. I started this journey two years ago now. Here we are halfway through that's the beginning of the second half i feel like i've grown and changed so much as an individual since the beginning of this oh. our 4x4 from go campers has been incredible to have our adventure mobile this thing is a freaking beast i absolutely love it Super cozy to sleep in, really well insulated. I'm just so happy we got this. And look at these big tires. This has gotten us through some questionable roads. So, really happy about this. I'm cold. <laughs> I can't believe there's a huge possibility this is gonna happen tomorrow. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Wow. Sticker. She's so good. She's going to put a sticker on the, I don't know what that is. Some kind of metal thing. It's so amazing to have so much support on this project and in life. My life wasn't always like that. And it's really cool to have my best friend here with me while I do the peak. And I've got to say my patrons, your monthly contributions helped fund the plane ride here. So I really, really appreciate it. 
to get a mountain guide for this, which is 100% necessary, it's 580 euros. Any kind of contribution goes a long way. So thank you so much. Okay, now I need a snack. Kind of tired of granola bars, but ooh, almonds. When I looked at the forecast this time, I felt at ease and not so anxious. Maybe this would actually happen. We were inching closer to where we would stay for the night, but there was one more waterfall on our list. We're out here doing what feels like a bit of a warm up for tomorrow morning, and I can see the summit. Well, what we believe to be the summit anyways. It looks deceiving. This is eight o'clock at night, still tons of daylight, but I wanted to hurry out so I could prepare and get at least five hours of sleep before the hike. So far, everything was going according to plan. So where did it go wrong? I'm so glad we got this place. It's like heaven here. It's so amazing. And the owner, really lovely. They even made their own little book so great <laughs> this was a tactical part of the plan because i needed to pack for a potentially 16 hour day and get my food ready a shower how wonderful it worked out for kathy too because she could go back and rest after dropping me off she's the best while i was packing she cooked us dinner <sighs> for a shower in three days <laughs> I know it's gross, but always travel with some wipes. I'm ready. I just have to make my sandwiches for tomorrow and the last little bits of packing. I can do that in the morning. I'm ready. I was on track for time. We were scheduled to start at 6 a.m. and it was a five minute drive away. Ready. It's ready as be. <laughs> but anytime I have an alarm on, I always think I'm going to miss it. Especially when it's something like this. <laughs> Which is silly because I never do. <laughs> but that's pretty. I saw some vehicles and wondered who I'd be hiking with. I hoped that they would be good hiking buddies. <laughs> Kathy is so patient. She waited with me while I got pumped. The guide was here already and we were waiting for the other two to show up. Half an hour late, they arrived. We needed to get going right away. I didn't have the best first impression, and you'll find out why, but there was nothing I could do except put my best attitude on and tackle this beast. It was hella steep. My calves were waking up and my heart rate was increasing. It was go time, baby. At first, it was a great pace. I was doing fine and the other two hikers were chatting away in a language I don't speak. The guide was listening to a podcast. After an hour, we stopped to take a layer off. Okay, our first little stop. Pretty steep coming up, but it's good. <laughs> Yeah, it's like so cushy. <laughs> but it's also really nice to cap on it. Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, there's such a soft kind of pad. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's so nice. The wind was cutting like glass, so a good jacket is necessary. This is when I noticed our pace started to slow. Was I really that fit or was something wrong? I didn't have pillows. So we went in a shop and we brought two of the small 
another stop, this time to fill up water. I'd barely drank any of my three liters, so I was fine. But this is when I learned what was off. So we are one-fifth of the way up and we're going at a slow pace. Our guide is not doing so well. He's got cold sweats, he feels like he's gonna vomit, probably a little bit worse than he's letting on. Um, yeah, he says he needs to puke. Personally, I think health is way more important than any tour, any hike, <laughs> any project, so. Just trying to support him and if his body needs us to turn back, then so be it. I'll just come back to Iceland another time. No biggie for me. These are the things with the mountains, right? Like, you just never know. On a positive note, we've got really great weather. It's so beautiful up here. And yeah, it's a nice workout. So even if we don't keep going, it's a really nice workout. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I was counting how many times he would stumble or like trip into a ro rock and on average it was every 12 steps. I don't have a lot to do <laughs> on a hike. I don't have anybody to talk to, so. Um, yeah, and some funky things happen with the pole. So personally, based on that, I would say we should go back. Because if something did happen and somebody fell into a crevasse, he said he might not have the strength to rescue. And that's where it really matters, you know? In another few hundred meters, we stopped again. We were near the glacier. I started thinking we might need to call for rescue. He plopped down and I tried to reassure him that it's okay, his health is more important and we can turn back without any issues. It seemed he felt guilty. And then the other two piped up and said, yeah, it's okay, but they really wanted to see the glacier. Maybe he could rest and try some of their medicine and it would be fine. They were uncomfortably pushy. They had like their medicine kit and they had like this package. I said it was kind of like something for stomach flus or something that when you have food poisoning you take it. And it looked like Vaseline and like the guy said it tasted like sand. And they're like, yeah, try this, have it with some water and then maybe we can keep going. And I was like, Don't be so pushy, like, this, it was probably already hard for him to even say, I don't feel good, you yeah. know, I have to turn back. But yeah, he had that, and he was like, yeah, this tastes horrible. <laughs> it made me throw up. I went for a pee, and the other two had a smoke break. When we all came back, it was decided we'd turn around. I felt a wave of relief. I didn't want any of our lives at risk or to be attached by rope <laughs> to two people like that. On the way down, I chatted with the guide to distract him from his discomfort. He apologized and I said, for what? Your health is more important. Oh, is that Kathy? That's impeccable timing, that is her, look at her. I got back in the car with Kathy and we had a debriefing while we kept driving to the next spot. The other two, they they really wanted to do it, so they were being quite pushy. So it was a bit of a, a crappy dynamic, but I, like myself, I just said, your health is more important. Like, I can always go back. Like, and his
his point was really good, and that's what he said to the couple. He's like, if I feel weak and I don't, like, I'm not with it, and somebody falls in the crevasse, I probably don't have the strength to rescue him. Yeah. I'm like, I'm glad he said that, because that's a hundred percent the issue. Hopefully he feels better. Yeah. He did not. He didn't look good. No, he really didn't. Like, he would pale. Yeah. Oh, I feel bad for the guy. So, I got a nice workout in. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Here? One of our last stops of the trip was one of my favorites, and it was such a tease because I could see the summit the whole time. We listened to the crackling sound of the ice. Soaked it all in. Look at this girl. What were you doing? <laughs> I was just taking it all in, as the lady said. <laughs> she asked me, she's like, you're okay, right? I was like, yeah, I'm just tired. Like, you're just taking it in? I was like, yeah. <laughs> just letting your, your full body get the experience. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I didn't summit, and this was not peak 26. But I'm a big believer in things happening for a reason. And this just wasn't my time to summit, and that's okay. Another human's health always comes first, and it gave me more time with my bestie. <laughs> so maybe this was all a plan from the grand universe for me to ship our converted sprinter van from Denmark to Iceland with my tiny family of three. Wouldn't that be an adventure? One can dream, and while it's important to do so. Whether that scenario happens or not, I will be back. I do need to summit this mountain. And now, I'm really ready. Maybe next time I'll be climbing with some of you who are also doing the same, Grounds of Europe. Come on, join the journey, subscribe if you've gotten this far, why not? <laughs> that way you don't miss any adventures and you can get ready for more Iceland content coming. I'm talking videos and a map. And thank you for being on this adventure with me. It's incredible. I love reading your comments. I love hearing your stories. A lot of you reach out and tell me about your adventures and that's what really brings me joy. <laughs>